Hi there, welcome to today's episode. Are you a coach, consultant, or leader that you would like to communicate better through the copy in your website or the captions in your social media post? As we know, words are important. If so, today you are in for a treat. My guest is Jeff Common. Now, Jeff is a direct response copywriter and brand strategist who help online entrepreneurs launch their six, seven figure digital product. He has worked with some of the A-list clients such as Dr. Daniel Amen and Mike Kim, Paul Martellini and Dr. Amy Johnson and so many more. Now, this is what we talk about in the episode. Number one, what are the biggest mistakes? when you are creating your copy for your marketing assets. Number two, why is it so important you need to think about context when you are creating your copy? Number three, what are some key components for a six-figure sales page? And so much more. Now, let's check with Jeff. Welcome to the show, Jeff. It's so great to be here. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, really awesome to have such a wonderful copywriter, uh, especially, uh, well, in the introduction, I already told all, 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 all your goodies, all, all the credibility <laughs> you have. So I will not repeat again here, but we always love to hear from you, you know, the person itself that how did you arrive now to get to do such an awesome work? Sometimes I pinch myself and wonder how, um, you know, I wrote, so I'm a copywriter, obviously, as everyone knows, um, I wrote my first story at eight years old. It's still um, on the shelf right behind me, the, the story that I wrote at eight years old. Um, I was a, a fairly small kid, fairly shy kid, fairly timid kid. Um, and so I found that I could write a story, create a world where I was the hero, where I was the winner, where I was, um, you know, the one that everyone wanted to hang out with and all that. Um, and so even early, early on, even at eight years old, I was writing books about making the world a more beautiful, more perfect place. Um, and that continued on that, that desire for, for beauty and, 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 uh, you know, kind of bringing heaven to earth in a sense that kind of continued on, uh, throughout the rest of my childhood, throughout my teen years. Um, that's the whole reason that I got into, uh, mission work and into ministry and, um, and all that, because I, I had this goal of creating a more perfect world. I didn't want it to be fictional though, right? I could write a great story. I could write a great context and make myself the hero of the story and all that, but I wanted it to be real that this world became a better place as well. Not just in my, in my stories, but, but in, in reality. So, um, like I said, that, that is what brought me into to mission work and into ministry. And then eventually brought me into this thing called copywriting where I'm leaving out obviously tons of details and, and years and years of, of side stories and all that. But, um, one of the keys, one of the things that really interested me about copywriting and marketing is that you can do the same thing. You can create a beautiful uh, picture of a world, an aspiration almost that, that people want to reach towards. Uh, and you can use that manipulatively. You can use that in a bad way to, to just sell stuff and trick people and, and be skeezy and lame and all that, you know, like, like a used car salesman, or you can use it to really make the lives of the people that you serve and care about better uh, and, and get them in on, on making this world a more beautiful and perfect place. So. Um, when I found that you could do that with marketing, with copywriting, uh, it was just such a natural transition from this love of writing to this love of, oh, I can write for businesses, for people to help them in that mission to make this world a better place too. So long story short, that's, that's my backstory. That's where I got to where I am today. That's awesome. And, uh, it's always love to hear, you know, uh, how how we arrive to today where we are because i think a lot of copywriters right uh it's you know they all have different story but i think a lot of them also because of oh you know they treat just a business but mm -hmm. we can feel what you just share is you want to make the world a, a more beautiful place uh so that's really lovely to hear now uh i want to kind of transit to uh the business side of the thing you know, I know you have written, uh, for, uh, you know, influencers, very, uh, you know, we call them A-list influencers <laughs> in sales page. Yeah. So what will, what will you call the key components 
of a six-figure sales page. Well, for lack of term, normally I don't like to put a number on six-figure, seven-figure, but just for the context of this, that for you guys know that what we are talking about, what, what kind of level of sales page you're talking about. And so, Jeff, can you tell us about what are some key components? Yeah, well, and I appreciate the plug of a six-figure sales page because people can go to sixfiguresalespage.com and, and get my training on, on how to write a six-figure sales page. Um, so, again, the, the, the first step, the first stage is always the research. Even if you think you know your avatar, your potential customer, your prospect really well, um, <coughs> pardon me, <clears throat> you know, that, that avatar can change. If the past year has taught us anything or, or 14 months or whatever has taught us anything, it's that situations in the world can change and situations with our avatar can change too. So just because you did the research once doesn't mean that you, you don't need to do it um, you know, over and over again. So the first part of any successful sales page is making sure you've done the research of knowing who you're talking to um, and what you want to talk to them about. So I typically go through, um, I have a 6P framework that I call it, uh, um, that I run people through. You know, before you write a single word of copy, you're going to figure out their, their problem, uh, the problem that you're addressing, the promise that you're making. Uh, you're going to know what proof or testimonials you have um, and so on and so on in the 6Ps. But for the first part is the research. Once you get the research done, then sales pages, um, I'm not going to say they're easy, but they're they're rather simple. They're rather formulaic after that point, once you know all those details. So, um, and again, when I when I write a, a sales page, I just go through those six Ps over and over again um, in a rather templated manner. Um, because, you know, once you've written a few of these sales pages, you know the formula, the format that works. And um, there's no need to to reinvent the wheel. You can just use that same format, that same formula uh, and input your research into that. Um, so the first stage is research. The next is, is really just popping that research into, uh, into your template, into your frame or into your uh, formula. And then, uh, and then you can really go from there. Um, once you got the research figured out, writing's, writing's not that hard. Okay, so <laughs> the key components, the foundation is to do the research. I think is research mm -hmm. on you know, I um, mean, the, the, the person you are, ser you are serving and yes. obviously their, the problems, their desires, mm -hmm. uh, really clear about that. And then see pair up your solution. Uh, yeah. both. I make would make Go ahead. And make sure that the, the solution, that's, that's a good point that, uh, you know, we want to, I call them, they're, they're just an exercise in opposites. The problem that you're speaking to is just the opposite of the solution that you offer, right? So if you're, if your solution is going to teach them to, um, sp <laughs> ironically, I was going to say speak better to get rid of their ums, right? Maybe you're a speech coach or something and you're, you're helping them get rid of their ums. Then the problem is, um, <laughs> I keep saying ums now. Now I'm very aware of it. The problem is you, you keep saying ums, but then you want to go deeper than that. that. And that's in the research. You're saying your ums, you feel unprofessional. You're being perceived as unprofessional. Uh, you're being perceived as less valuable than you actually are because the words that you say other than um are very, very important. So when you do the research, you can, you can address all those things, but you want to do that exercise in opposites that your solution has a set of uh, specific problems that it's addressing. So don't on your sales page or in any copy, you don't need to speak to any problems other than the opposites of, of, uh, of your solutions. Yeah, that, that's a great reminder uh, when I think we always say that, you know, the I'm sure that you guys have those uh, experience when you are reading something that's a reading a, a sales page and you kind of cannot, if it's a good one, you cannot uh, help, but you probably kind of nod in your head yep. or even inwardly nod in your head, kind of say, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, personally, I call them the yes slope. <laughs> Even yeah. sales page that you can create like a yes slope from the beginning, the yes, 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 yes. They, they click the button, they buy, right? Yeah. But and it's the order... same as, mm -hmm. go ahead, sorry. No, no, go ahead. It's the same as um, in-person events. If you remember what those were like, uh, say so that you're at a conference and the speaker there is really good and, and they're asking you questions can, can I, or, or even a, a pastor, right? Can I get an amen? And you repeat back, amen, or you know, we build in those, those, uh, you call a yes slope. I call them mini yeses or micro commitments. Every time uh, that you're, that you're nodding your head, reading a sales page, um, those are mini yeses that are eventually that, that I'm writing in there intentionally to get you to nod and say yes in the back of your, uh, back of your mind. 
Because then when you get to that buy now button, you've already said 20 yeses. What's, what's the big deal about saying one more, right? Um, and again, you don't do that manipulatively, but you know that you're serving your audience well by getting them to buy this thing, uh, this product, this service. So uh, yeah, you build in those, those micro yeses because it just makes it so much easier for them to say yes when it gets to the transaction. Um, anyway, so that was just my, my thought on your yes uh, slope. Absolutely. Yeah. So you see the key is, it's just like Jeff said, is now we try to manipulate people. It's then in order to go get those yeses, it's because you really understand who they are and how you can serve them, right? I mean, in, in reality, that's what entrepreneurs we are about. We are problem solvers. And obviously, we also, while we solve their problem, we also can fulfill their desire and their dreams. And so I want you to really understand, you know, in a kingdom is about people and business, mm-hmm. same is about people, like serving people. So, uh, so I want you to kind of get this clear. Don't feel like you are, you know, kind of crafting something bad. That's not the case. It's you want to use your expertise to serve them. But what is the point? You can have all the treasures in house, but you don't know how to communicate with that. <laughs> then that's where you need probably need like Jeff, this kind of expert to help you to, uh, learn how to communicate better with your words. Because uh, in uh, my own Power One framework, and we teach a lot of our clients say, you know, obviously words is one of the, <laughs> the most powerful um, a weapon or most powerful tools to communicate mm-hmm. with uh, your clients, especially if you try to attract the right clients and especially come to you, try to validate your first offer, right? So the question is, what are the keys to write a direct response copy that actually not appear very false and see sleazy, but actually connects with the potential clients and keep them engaged and ultimately convert them well? Yeah. And you, you brought out a, uh, you brought up an important point there, but you know, we don't want, essentially, we don't want to manipulate people in, in what we write because we can feel that as customers, as consumers. As, as the person being marketed to, we can always feel when, when someone's trying to, you know, kind of trick us into something, manipulate us into buying something. Um, so we don't want to go there. That's the easy way to write copy is to just trick and manipulate people. And it's, um, I won't lie. It works. It can work, but it's not going to, uh, long term, I don't think it's a very effective strategy for business. Um, so the words that we use are really, really crucial. They're really critical to, um, building an audience, building a connection with that audience, uh, and then eventually serving that audience by selling them our, our service, our product. Um, and so, uh, research, I don't, uh, you know, the, the podcast that I do, Psychology of Copywriting, um, I review a lot of academic research into, you know, what's going on in the brain when people read our copy. Um, and one of those studies talked about three really important types of words that we need to use in our uh, in our stories or in our copy, including our sales copy. Um, and that's the, the words need to be informative. So not informational. People don't, people don't want the information. Um, they want to be informed. And there's a, there's a subtle but important difference there that, um, you know, information is just telling me that that carpet is red. Informative is telling me, you know, that carpet is, is red because, um, you know, my mom's lipstick was always red and, and she passed away you know, 10 years ago, you know, building that story in there is, is more informative than just plain old information. People also want the words that we use to be specific. So they don't want us to beat around the bush. They don't want us to try to, you know, we, we talked about being manipulative and being sketchy in the words. A lot of times that's because we're, we're skirting around the issue and people can feel it that we're not, um, we're not being specific and direct. So people want specific, uh, words. They also want context driven words. Um, so again, don't, don't just skirt around the issue. Um, but, but be, um, specific and context driven is about, um, you know, the context of who we're talking to and what we're trying to, uh, how we're trying to serve them and what we're trying to sell them. That builds the context to tell us, should we use, um, you know, one word over another? Should we, you know, does this audience prefer us to, to, to be, um, direct, to be indirect? Does this audience prefer to be spoken to like we're a teacher or spoken to like we're a friend? Um, you know, that context builds the words that we use as well. So informative, specific, and context-driven. 
There's also another really powerful word, um, and that's the word because. So when we're writing sales copy, it's not just that we want to be uh, informative and specific and context driven. We also want to give them a reason. There was that old study. It was done in like the, the 1970s about somebody that wanted to um, butt in line to use the photocopier. And so they would say to the person in front of them, can I use the copier because I need to make copies? It didn't matter what the, if the favor was small, it didn't matter what that, um, what, what came after the because it followed the right pattern of words. Um, can I, can I make copies because I need to make copies, right? That makes no sense. And yet it was like 92% of the people said, sure, go ahead. Uh, even though there was no actual reason. So the, the power of the word because in our sales copy is you should you know, click this button because you should buy this product because, um, and we, we can lead people in an ethical and, and good way. We can lead people down the road that we want them to go down um, by using those types of simple little words like because. Um, so that's, those are some of the, the types of words and, and one specific word of what we can use in our sales copy. I love that. And about context, I really uh, love about context. Um, Cause I think sometimes even let's say we know uh, our specific client audience, but maybe they are in different stage of their customer journey, right? So uh, what I mean is, for example, maybe that your uh, potential clients, they are, they are uh, coaches or consultants, those type of people. But even among the coaches and consultants, that some of them, the awareness level is different. Some of them, maybe they are just start looking for solution or some of them, they already try solution, but they, they just haven't, they, they haven't found the right one yet, that type of things. So Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, how about in the different stages of the customer awareness, uh, what we need to pay attention to when it comes to copywriting? Yeah. And. So obviously because of, of the podcast that I do, I like to geek out on a lot of stuff. I like to do the research on a lot of stuff. And a lot of times, um, you know, when it comes to the customer journey and knowing where that prospect is in that journey. Um, we often don't know, or we, we fake it, or we, um, we don't get specific enough because we haven't actually done the work of, of knowing the research of knowing who this person is that we're talking to uh, and where they are on that journey. Because the the wording for a, a cold lead, uh, somebody who who's just finding out about you, who happened to find you at a random Google search, you know, the wording that we use there is very different um, than the wording that we're going to use for somebody who they're ready to buy, they're ready to whip out their credit card and spend four or five figures on on your services. Right? Um, so in the first case, we're going to use a lot of you know a lot more stories. We're going to try to connect with them by telling stories when they're cold, especially. Uh, and the more awareness that we build, you know, we're going to, we're going to then essentially move from stories to talking to them about our solutions. Uh, and here's what you're going to get in this product. Here's what we're going to do in this service. Uh, you know, laying out, you know, on each call, we're going to talk about this and this and this. By the end of the third call, you're going to know, um, exactly who your customer is and how to, how to, you know, sell to them or whatever, depending on what your service is, obviously. Um, the wording that we use and the types of words that we use and the types of strategies that we use, they're all so different, whether it's cold, uh, lukewarm, warm, hot customer or hot prospects. Um, and that all boils down to research and knowing who we're talking to and, and why they want what we offer, how we can make their life better um, by serving them through what we offer them. Yeah. The reason why I purposely asked that question, because Jeff is such an expert and also, I got asked all the time that, you know, Kelly, how can I write a great sales page? Mm -hmm. And I feel like question is a very vague question, right? <laughs> because if we don't know who you sell to or that's a which stage of the, just like Jeff said, if how they came to your sphere, let's say, mm -hmm. are they still just, they totally don't know you, they're strangers, or are we writing a sales page that people already follow you, know your podcast, they're already on your list for a while, all that type of things. Uh, so I purposely ask that question because I want you guys kind of start to be aware of that. And you no, know, obviously you're gonna have to go to check Jeff's website, you know, for more information. But um, this is a perfect timing. I wanna transit to next question for Jeff. It's, it's what are the some biggest common mistake 
mm. when you know, especially coaches, consultants, they start to write their first sales page. Right. You know, there's there's obviously a lot of mistakes, um, but I'll speak to one um, that I see most often in copy. So, you know, general marketing mistakes. You're spending you're spending your money in, on the wrong place, in the wrong ads. You're targeting the wrong audience. Um, you don't know your goal. You don't know your avatar. Those those are all um, general marketing mistakes. The biggest one I see um, in copywriting, though, is really it goes back to research. Um, like I said, I geek out on research, uh, but it goes back to research that you don't know. Uh, you don't know, or, or you haven't spent the time to align your brand voice with your customer aspirations, um, which might sound a bit airy fairy. So let me uh, describe it a little more. So you want to connect the way that you speak, the way that you write, rather, uh, the words that you write, uh, and, and the manner, the style in which you write, with who your customer or client uh, is or wants to become. So I, I have a. Uh, a friend, a fellow uh, copywriter who said it this way, that she has a very intentional and very loud brand, even though she's not necessarily a loud person. She's an introvert. She's uh, kind of shy at a conference. She wants to go spend time in her hotel room, just like the rest of us uh, by herself, just like the rest of us introverts, I should say. Um, but her brand is very loud, very out there because she knows that her uh, her ideal customer, her ideal client, wants that for their brand. They want to be a personality driven brand. So she's loud and out there in her visual branding uh, and design and even in her copy because that's who her ideal customer, uh, ideal client wants to be. So she's aligned her brand voice with um, with her uh, customer aspirations, their client aspirations. I'm working on a on some copy for a client right now. He's a a lawyer. And so I've, you know, written through or read through a bunch of his uh material he's got he's written a bunch of books he has a bunch of youtube videos and all that but i've i've identified okay he has four main traits as a brand and that's he wants to be a servant he wants to be an educator he wants to be an expert and he wants to be a guide uh, and so every single word that i'm going to write um, that's who his customer wants and so that's how i'm going to position him in the words that i that i write because when you're looking for a lawyer you want someone who's going to serve you you want someone who's going to uh, be an expert you want someone who's going to teach you a little bit um, you know, show that they know their stuff and use it in, uh, um, talk to you about it in everyday language. And you want them to guide you in the right direction. Uh, so every word that I'm writing for him and his brand is aligning that brand voice with who his um, customers or clients want. So there's, there's those two ways of doing it. One is who your customer wants to be. And the other one is who they are looking for specifically. That, that's a bit kind of industry specific. Um, you know, if a lawyer was being loud and brash in their brand, that might give off the wrong idea. Um, but for a copywriter who's, who's, um, working with personality driven brands, that makes sense. Uh, so that's the biggest mistake that I see is that again, you haven't done the research to figure out who your customer is. And then more research of how do you, def how do you do that? How do you write that? Um, what does that look like in the words that you write? So I get super granular and, and, um, again, I geek out. I know where they're going to put commas. I know, do they love commas? Do they hate commas? I know. And it's all in a, in a template. Uh, that I have or in a, in a, in a guide that I have uh, for every client, you know, do they use ellipses? Are they passive? Are they aggressive in their words? Are they friendly? Um, what's the, what's the meter of their voice? Are they, are they a fast talker or a slow talker in the way that I write their voice? Um, and again, that's all just so we can make the, not make, so we can help the customer feel like they're reading you know, their own diary. They're reading something that's connecting with them really strongly. So the biggest mistake I, I see uh, the, the biggest money making, uh, money losing mistake that I see is you haven't done that work to, uh, to align brand voice and customer aspiration. Wow. Isn't that such a golden nugget? You know, align with, with your brand voice with your, uh, your potential clients, uh, their aspiration. I think that it's super fantastic. So, Jeb, I just cannot thank you enough for coming on the show today. Uh, we surely will put all the links uh, in the show notes, but can you tell us verbally that where generally people, where they can find you? Best place is just on my website, jeffcoleman.com. Don't try to spell my name on your own. Just go to the link in the show notes because uh, <laughs> it's Jeff with a G. It's Coleman with a K. It's it's weird. Um, what can we say? He's a, he's a nice Canadian. So. Right, exactly. Um on my website, you'll see, we talked about the six figure sales page as a, a webinar training, uh, there that you can check out, uh, how to do some of that research. 
um, and even a workbook for free that you can you can go through as well to do that research. Uh, you can also go to brandvoicetemplate.com. You can download that brand voice template, brand voice guide that I just talked about of how you can align uh, your voice with your uh, client's aspirations as well. Uh, those are the best places. You can have me on Instagram and, and all that, but uh, my website and the, the resources there is the best place to check out. That's awesome. So you say, say again, the brand voice? Brandvoicetemplate.com. Awesome. That'll just forward you to the right page on my website. Okay. Okay. So we will uh, also put that in the show notes. So thank you so much, Jeff. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. It was, it was an honor to speak with you and with your, your audience as well. Thank you. How did you enjoy the episode? I hope that you make a lot of notes. For your convenience, you surely can go to the show note to grab all the links of Jeff and all the goodies he's offering. You just go to kellybottle.com forward slash podcast. Very simple. Then you can find his episode there. And can I ask you a small favor? In order for more people can find this podcast, so a more ripple effects of influence and impact that we can create, would you please consider go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review for us? And we will really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss another video. And please share the videos with your friends so we can help more Christian entrepreneurs to rise up in the marketplace.